Welcome to our discussion on the addition and subtraction of fractions. You can see not a lot of objectives. We'll remind ourselves that adding fractions is a matter of counting. And if the fractions have a common denominator, it's simple, right? If we have one-fifth and we add three-fifths to it, then we're really just adding one plus three and we have four total fifths. Simple and easy. So if we have 1 eighth plus 3 eighths, we know that we get 4 eighths, but then of course 4 eighths reduces to 1 half. So we always want to reduce our answers just like with every other thing. Whenever you work with fractions, you always want to re reduce out your answer. Um, like fractions, they're called like fractions if they have the same denominators. So whenever you see something referred to as like fractions, it just means the denominators are the same. Adding like fractions is very easy because all you have to do is add the numerators, right? Add the numbers on the top and the bottom stays the same because we're adding up how many of those things we have. Where we have two ninths. So we have something that is the size of a ninth and we've got two of them. And then we've got another thing that's the size of a ninth, but we have five of those. So when we add them together, we have seven of those ninths. That's why we don't add the bottoms. Same thing if we've got multiples, right? Three plus one plus five still gives us nine. Nine twelfths reduces to three fourths. Mixed numbers. Again, as long as they have um, the same denominator for the fractional part of them, we can add very easily. You can actually just add the whole numbers, right? 2 plus 3 is 5. Add the mixed numbers. 1 fifth plus 3 fifths is 4 fifths, and you're done. Nice and simple. Sometimes when you add these two fractional parts, it will end up being more than one, and then you got to realize that you got to kind of bring the remainder over and do all that kind of stuff. And that could be a little tricky. So it's often easier. So here's an example, right? Three plus one is four. Then five plus seven gets me 12. I got 12 eighths. And you go, oh, crud. That's more than a one. Well, first I'm going to reduce it, right? 12 eighths becomes um, six over four, which becomes three over two. So here's my three halves which is the same thing as one and a half, right? Because you could, you could reduce this to, not reduce it, sorry. Change it into a mixed number of one and a half by taking three, divided by two. It goes in once. You have a remainder of one, so there's my one and a half. And then remember that when we have a mixed number, it's really the first thing plus the second thing. So it's four plus this, which gives five halves. I think that that's a lot more brain power than just dealing with mixed numbers. I'm sorry, then just dealing with improper fractions. So I would take both of these and I would convert them into improper fractions and go from there, right? So 8 times 1 is 8. 8 plus, plus 5 is 13 eighths. 8 times 3, 24. 24 plus 7, 31 eighths. Add these two together, you get 44 over 8, right? 31 plus 13. We can reduce that. That becomes 22 over 4. That reduces even further. That becomes 11 halves. And now all I got to do is, uh, is uh, reduce this, again, with my calculator technology or, you know, by hand, 11 divided by 2 goes in there 5 times, which is 10, remainder of 1. There's my 5 and a half. I don't know. Maybe you like the other way. I think this way is a little bit more efficient. Um, and I definitely think it's a little bit more straightforward. It might be a little more math, right? We might have uh, one or two extra steps, but I think all of the steps involved are simpler, easier steps to wrap your brain around than some of the steps doing it this way. So that's just my tip. You can go either way. You know, they both work. And this is where my tip is spelled out, right? That I think it's easier if you first rewrite each one as an improper fraction then add them, then reduce, then convert. I just find that as a, a simpler recipe to follow. Okay, what happens when we have to add unlike fractions, i.e. fractions with different denominators? Well, you can come up with the least common denominator. I'm sure you've heard that many times before, where you're finding the smallest number that both denominators go into you know, evenly. Well, that can be a pain in the butt, and it could be something that opens you up to making very easy, simple, silly mistakes. So oftentimes, it's, it's easier to just find any denominator. You don't have to worry about it being the least common denominator. Just find a denominator, right? Find any number that they both go into. 
And that's usually easiest by just multiplying the two denominators. Three times four gives me 12. Well, in the case of three and four, since they have nothing in common, as far as factors are concerned, 12 is in fact the least common denominator. But if we just always do it this way, the only thing we have to worry about at the end is reducing our fractions. And reducing fractions is pretty darn easy. I think we're all used to doing it, and I think we could pretty much do it in our sleep. So it's a lot easier, in my opinion, to just always find the common denominator of multiplying the bottoms, right? So you do 2 thirds times 4 over 4, that changes it into 8 twelfths. You do 3 fourths times 3 over 3, that becomes 9 twelfths. We can now add those together right? 8 and 9 is 17. We'd get 17 twelves, and then we would reduce from there, obviously changing it to a, a mixed number. So here's the example written out, right? We get to the 17 twelves. We do 17 divided by 12, which goes in there once with a remainder of 5, and there's our answer of 1 and 5 twelves. Okay, so that whole least common denominator thing, sure, you can find it, um, but it's a pain in the butt. And in fact, I think the bow tie method, which uses my idea of just finding a common denominator, is much easier than doing the least common denominator stuff. It's less steps, um, and it's uh, easier steps, right? It, everything you're doing is a simpler mathematical operation. It takes less kind of thinking about it. Okay, so here's the bow tie technique for adding. This works for adding subtracting, and comparing fractions. It's great. It's because it's one technique we can use for three different things. Okay, so we want to add these things. Well, simply, we take the bottom of one fraction, multiply it by the top of the other. That gives us 12. The bottom of this one times the top of that one. That gives us 40. Then we multiply the two bottoms to get that, you know, that common denominator. So 8 times 12 is 96. Sorry, 96, not a 4, dummy. 96. And then we, since this was addition, it's still addition, and we're just going to add these two numbers, 40 plus 12, right? 52 over 96, and then we'd reduce. All right, they're both divisible by 2. So that's 26, and then 96 divided by 2 is 48. Hey, they're, supposed to, they're still both divisible by 2. So 31 over 24, and you go, well, they're not both even, and... 31 is not divisible by 3, so it looks like we're kind of, we're done, so we could just change it into an improper and do 31 divided by 24, which gives us 1, and then the remainder is going to be 7, 7 24 And there's our answer, 1 and 7 24 Much easier, I think, than trying to come up with the least common denominator of 8 and 12, which in this case is 24, which you see that we got back to when we did the math. And so if you came up with the least common denominator, all that it saves you is some of the reduction, right? Your, your answer would have been over 24. You basically would have done all the work and you just would have gotten straight to 31 over 24 and then you would have gotten here. So it, it, all it does, is it saves you these two steps of reducing this to here and then to 31. I think those are easy steps. A lot easier than sitting here going, oh God, what's the least common denominator of 8 and 12? And then you have to write out all the factors of 8 and all the factors of 12 until you find ones that match. Or you got to do the um, prime factor tree of each and figure out what they have in common. Oh, big pain in the butt. And a lot of places where you can make mistakes. So I think it's a lot easier to do it the bow tie method. But here's the least common denominator method in case you want to see it. So we write them out in their prime factorization, right? You have to do those prime factor trees where you go, okay, 8 is 2 times 4, 4 is 2 times 2, all right, this is 2 times 6, which is 2 times 3, and then you can see 2, 2, and 3, 2, 2, and 2. Okay, the least common denominator has to include the largest amount of each number. I've got three twos here, so I'm going to need all three of them in my least common denominator because three will also capture the smaller amount. I have a three here, so I need a three in, in my least common denominator, and I don't have a three. Let's say there was a five over here. I'd have to add a five in, right, and, and so on and so forth. So two times two times two times three, eight times three, there's our 24 that we already knew was the least common denominator. So then we go here and we go, okay, now we know what the least common denominator is. Now we need to convert 
each of these into 24, right? So to get 8 into 24, we know that we have to multiply it by 3. And if we have to do 12 by 24, we know we have to multiply it by 2. And then so this times 3, top and bottom, right? 3 over 3 gives us 3 over 24. This one, we got to do it times 2 plus 10 over 24. And then we get 13 over 24. You know, we didn't have to reduce it. That's the only thing that it, it basically saved us. But I think it's, it's a tougher um, process because coming up with the least common denominator, I think, takes more time. So one more example in case you really want to do it this way. The least common denominator of these two, well, 12 is 2 times 2 times 3. Again, using the little prime tree, do a little prime factorization tree on this and get 3, 3, and 5. So we need both of our 2s, both of our 3s, and our 5, and we get this big old number of 180. So all of the examples in the book that you're using and the rest of this PowerPoint presentation are going to use the least common denominator uh, method. So if you want to do it, here's some good um, examples of how to use it. But I really think the bow tie method is much easier because I can do it really quick right here and show you. All right, instead of doing this least common denominator thing, let's just do 8 times 1. 6 times 5. And in fact, the nice thing about this is we've just, if you ever have to compare fractions, figure out which one's bigger, 30 is bigger than 8, so 5 eighths is bigger. It's that, that simple. We're adding, right? So we get 38 on top. We do the bottom. 6 times 8 is 48. And then all we got to do is reduce. So the top divided by 2. Well, 38 divided by 2 is 19. 48 divided by 2 is 24, 19 is prime, so we know it doesn't reduce any further, and there we go. I think that's a lot less work than all of this. If you're wondering why they call it a bow tie, you know, the fraction and the fraction here and the little cross multiplying kind of makes this bow tie shape. That's why it's called the bow tie method. Who cares? Another example, well, again, as we've said time and time again, we can't do mathematical operations efficiently with mixed numbers. Instead, we need to turn them into improper fractions. Now, we could just deal with the fractional parts, right? Because we know 2 plus 3 is just 5, and then we could just add the two fractions and go from there and hope that our answer isn't bigger than 1 so that we have to add it back. You know, so maybe that's the best way to do it. I don't know. I kind of like making the whole thing an improper but it's whatever you guys like. So I'll do it this other way just so you can see it. it. You're basically reminding yourselves that this is really 2 plus 3 eighths, right? Plus 3 plus 1 6. And because addition is commutative, we can add these first and get 5. And then add the two fractions. And then this is where we do the bow tie technique, right? We get 6 times 3 is 18. 8 times 1 is 8. Across the bottom, 6 times 8 is 48. We get 18 plus 8 is 26 over 48. Reduces to 13 over 24. And there's our answer, 5 and 13 24s, right? That's all well and good. But when we go on to do subtraction, this technique is going to fall apart. It can be done, but it's a big pain in the butt. And it's going to open you up to a lot of places where you're going to make a mistake. So I still think it's always better to instead change the whole thing into improper fractions and do the work that way. So 2 times 5 is 10 plus 1. This becomes 11 halves. 3 times 3 is 9 plus 2, also 11, but 11 thirds. Now... Bow tie, right? 3 times 11, 33. 2 times 11, 22. We now know this one's bigger, but doy, we already knew it was bigger, right? 2 times 3 is 6. So here's my 6. And then we do 33 plus 22 is 55 over 6. 
and now we just figure out what that is, right, by doing 55 divided by 6 goes in there 9 times. 6 times 9 is 54 with a remainder of 1. So there's my 9 with a remainder of 1. But remember, this remainder is now over this fraction, so it's 1 sixth. A lot easier, I think, than dealing with you know, putting the whole numbers together, putting the fractions together, because like I said, when we do subtraction, it's a whole nother nightmare. And it, and it really becomes tricky when you have to do it with subtraction. So here's an example that with a, a real world example, you can pause the video and read through it. It's nothing new. I'm not going to spend time going over it. Okay, subtraction. Well, the bow tie technique works equivalently for subtraction. And of course, if we start off with uh, like fractions, i.e. the same denominators, then it works just like addition. You know, instead of adding the tops, we're now subtracting the tops, right? So 3 eighths minus 1 eighths is just 3 minus 1, which is 2. 2 eighths, which we reduce to 1 fourth. Simple and easy. But when we have to do unlike fractions, that's where they're going to want you to do the least common denominator, or we do the bow tie, right? 5 times 3, 15. 4 times 1, 4. 4 times 5, 20. And now we just remember there's a subtraction here. So 15 minus 4 is 11. There's our answer of 11 20ths. Quicker, easier, faster, better, less chance of mistakes, right? It's just a better way to do it. Now, here's where it gets, where I think dealing with mixed numbers as mixed numbers is a real pain. Because if you subtract the way they are, of course, if they're like fractions, it's easy. Because 5 minus 3 is 2. And then 5 6 minus 1 6 is just 4 6, which converts to 2 thirds. But how often are you going to have ones with like denominators? Not very often, right? So this one, we can see that if we did it, 6 minus 1 is 5. But then we do 1 fourths minus 3 fourths, and we get negative 2 fourths. What the heck do we do with that, right? So now it's like this whole borrowing and carrying over and blah, blah, blah. Big, big pain in the butt. It's always better, always easier, always safer. You're going to make less mistakes if we just convert and always work with improper fractions. 6 times 4 is 24 plus 1. This is 25 fourths minus 4 times 1 is 4. 4 plus 3 is 7. 7 fourths, 25 minus 7, right? 18 fourths, do the long division. 18 divided by 4. 4 times gives us 16, remainder of 2. So that's where we get 4 whole things. And then 2 fourths, right? Remainder over this, which becomes 4 and a half. Much easier than trying to do the whole let's work with the numbers and let's also work with the fraction pieces. So here is a closer look at how they do it. You can pause and go through it if you want, but I really recommend not doing it their way ever. Okay, so now let's move on to subtracting when you don't have a common denominator. Well, of course, they're going to want you to find that least common denominator, but again, I know I sound like a broken record, but I think it's a lot easier to just do improper and then bow tie. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 plus 1 is 7. 7 halves. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 plus 1 is 4. So we're subtracting 4 thirds. Now we've just reset it as a simple fraction minus fraction. We know we can do the bow tie technique. 3 times 7 is 21. 2 times 4 is 8. We're still doing subtraction, right? 2 times 3 is 6, so 21 minus 8 is 13, 13 sixths, so we've got to right, do our division. 13 divided by 6 goes 2 times, because 2 times 6 is 12, remainder of 1. Remember, this is still our new divisor, right? our new denominator, so the remainder goes on top of that. So we have two whole things. And then one remainder over six. Two and one sixth. Much easier than doing this stupid thing. And then, you know, what happens when the second fraction is bigger than the first fraction? And you got to do some sort of borrowing and blah, 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 blah. Okay? Last example. Again, change it. Four times five is 20. 20 plus one is 
21 fourths. 8 times 2 is 16. 16 plus 3 is 19 eighths. We're going to subtract. Now with this one, you could do the bow tie, but you could also recognize that these are pretty easy denominators, that 4 can become 8 very simply by multiplying top and bottom by 2. So there's nothing wrong with using you know, the least common denominator trick when there's a really obvious easy one, because it will save you some time if you can go that route. So 2 times 21 becomes 42, and then 2 times 4, of course, becomes 8, and then we're subtracting 19 eighths from it, 42 minus 19, right, is 23 over 8, and then we've got to figure out what the heck that is written back as a mixed number. So 8 times 2 is 16, 8 times 3 is 24, that's too big, so it can only go in 2 times, which is 16. We do the subtraction, we have a remainder of 7, so our answer is 2, right, 2 holes, and then our remainder of 7 over 8. 2 and 7 eighths, which of course is what they get after they do all their fancy rigmarole, big, big pain in the butt way more complicated than it needs to be. All right, that's all I got for you.